Let's get a cookies on three, guys. Ready? One, two, three. Quiet on the set, make sure my mic is on There is Dre and Juju Dog diving towards the pylon Go for two, so damn rude, recognize authority Spitting tips for fantasy, no way you're outscoring me Bold predictions with conviction every single day Sports addiction, no restriction, kicking game like Pele He's the greatest, what's the basis? Pick an athlete, let's debate this game Outrageous trading places, sudden death, take 10 paces Turn and shoot, poison truth, mamba mentality Future greats, take their place, dreams be Come reality, low and outside, knocked it out the park. Your boy discovered fire like a rock with a soft breath, acting like Neanderthals. Phantom flags, nothing calls. Corporate glasses, tragic falls. Every week, discuss it all. Settle it, listen up. Free of time, like Andrew Luck. Show's about to start. I suggest you buckle up. Cookies. <laughs> so. We got a special show for you guys today. We're going to be running through a mock draft again. We're doing that mock draft series for you guys. We'll be posting our results so you can judge us harshly because you would have taken somebody else in that position instead of the one I was picking. But we have two guests on the show with us today. We have a friend of the show, Jay. He's back with us. He'll be helping us out throughout the season again, but we wanted to get him on here. So, Jay, how are you doing today? Going well today. Excited to draft out. You know, kind of the first kind of uh, live draft I had today. So starting early, but never too late. Never too early. Start early on these fantasy drafts. I'd say. Oh yeah, me and Julian, I think are at like fifteen or sixteen drafts at oh, this my. point. Oh, Just my. running through all the the drafts for the show. But we also have a special guest with us, fantasy football lord. How are you doing today, bud? You know, I'm I'm out here living, man. Pretty good. Ready for football. Well, there you go. So how long have you been doing fantasy football? I actually didn't start playing until 2012. Prior to that, I just had no interest. So I only had interest in real football. I actually thought fantasy was kind of corny. Actually, maybe it still is, but I love it. So I, early on, and I would win leagues here and there, uh, I feel like what made me able to be successful was my uh, what I knew about the game of football itself. So after a couple of years of winning some leagues, I just decided to start putting out content, man, and trying to help other people. Well, there you go. That's why we kind of got into it. Is we, we started with the sports side, and then we added the fantasy, get into that game, because we knew that the fantasy audience is so big that we could get in there and make a lane of our own, so... I love doing it. It is pretty challenging. It makes you look at the stats a little bit more than just a, a novice player. Definitely. One second. I'm having some technical difficulties on my side with the draft room. So we might be uh, just drafting off of Jay's account right now because I got kicked for some reason. Oh, no. We're going to be kind of talking through, you know, kind of our strategies. Each of us are going to have a different strategy going in. Um, at that nine slot, kind of a consensus pick for the nine slot for us. In the first couple rounds, what do you guys look for? Do you just look for best available or do you try to get a running back first and then your receiver second? What's your guys' strategy in those first rounds? Okay, uh, so looking through the first round by yourself, when you're kind of picking this late into it, you're not likely to get a top, top tier running back because ultimately the first top tier running backs I see are, you know, McCaffrey, Barkley, and Zeke, of course, as the main top three. And then after that, you know, you're kind of picking somewhat more iffy running backs, even though, you know, you still have a decent amount of quality. I think here are the best values going to be looking at some kind of decent wide receiver, to be honest. The hope is someone like Devontae Adams, Tyree Kill, or even Hopkins falls down to aid my opinion. So I, I target usually a, a wide receiver at around this pick and then hopefully get a running back on the, on the comeback. Is this particular draft PPR, half? I think they just do standard, but generally we just we all run for PPR, but I think you PPR, can't change yeah. the settings in Yahoo to get into an actual mock draft for PPR. Which is yeah, so a at, nine, at nine, what I'm seeing available here is like Derek Dalvin Henry, Cook, Dalvin Cook. Yeah, so at this spot, me personally, I would go Tyree Hill, but I wouldn't argue Devontae Adams. I would look for Josh Jacobs on the uh, turn. 
Yeah, you can't really go wrong with any of those guys. So we did pick up Devontae Adams as the time was running down. I don't like these mock drafts because it only gives you like 10 seconds to draft. Normal that's drafts perfect. will give you. Oh, that's perfect. I like the two minutes. <laughs> gives you the full time, right? Two minutes. So you need two minutes in a fancy draft. Nah, not for me. Yeah, Average minute to minute 30 maybe. Yeah, the, the two-minute drafts, those ones do take a little while, especially in, like, a 12-man league. But, mm-hmm. I mean, sometimes I'll do it just, like, when in my work league if my boss is, like, right behind me or something. I know he's super impatient, so I'll, I'll take all of the time on there just to play mind games with them before the draft even starts. All right, so we're coming up in – oh, it looks like we're next. So available we got uh, Nick Chubb, Julio Jones, Josh Jacobs, Travis oh, Kelsey. Gone. So yeah, so it looks like too Josh much Jacobs depth. right there. There you go, Josh Jacobs. Yeah, no, I, I think you have to go Josh Jacobs in this pick because also we need a running back, and I still think you know Josh Jacobs mostly gonna be the bell cow uh, for the most part of the Raiders offense right now. There's a potential as well that you know you may look at Kelsey, but I still think it's too early in the second round to pick someone like too Kelsey. too much depth at tight end for me for for Travis Kelsey or even George Kittle. I, I'm a guy that likes to. Uh, it go and dig for the gold at that position later in the draft. There's a lot of guys, uh, Hayden Hurst, uh, John U. Smith, even Evan Ingram is like a higher mid-round guy. Yeah, especially this year, which is pretty weird because usually in past years, the tight end position is really thin, but this year it's pretty deep. And then you have dudes that are going – towards round 14 and 15 in Jack Doyle, who has a quarterback now in Phillip Rivers that loves throwing to tight ends. And then you have Eric Ebron going to the Steelers. And historically, Big Ben has liked to throw him to tight ends, you know, a la Heath Miller and everything. So you can get two pretty good tight ends for you, even in 14th, 15th round this year. So getting Travis Kelsey or George Kittle in the second round – even like the beginning of the second round, I feel like this year is just a bit too high price wise for what you can get, you know, a top tier running back or a top tier receiver at those points and not, you know, and not have to worry about those later down the line. And I just got a message from Julian. He says, we have to draft Cam Newton tonight as our quarterback. How do you guys like Cam Newton's fantasy value uh, with the Patriots? I mean, I wouldn't mind having him as my uh, QB2 to start out the season. If, if we're going to get a chance at Lamar right here. We still have yeah. Lamar coming up at what? At 30, so what, four to five picks away? We're about to yeah, probably, away, won't, so. probably won't get him. No, and because that, I'm going to auto-draft him two picks before, us, before I got kicked and can't get back in. So he's going to be on my team that auto-drafted because internet here for some reason after quarantine is god-awful in Albuquerque. So that's the case right now. Let's just say Jackson's off the board. What do you guys kind of look at right now? There's a boatload of wide receivers we look at right now, and the only wide running back that seems kind of flaws right now is either going to be Melvin Gordon, maybe look at Mostert or Fournette is kind of the three I would say. But there's just I like Jonathan Taylor. He's you have an old quarterback. You have a one of the best offensive lines in Indy. They're going to want to run the ball to help out Philip Rivers. I like Jonathan Taylor at this point, but it looks like we might be able to get Lamar. Lamar is three picks down and we are three picks that away from our team. Insane oh. if he yeah, I don't see it happening. Uh, let's see. I Super liked, Mario. I, 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 I like uh, oh, yeah, Super yeah, Mario he, took him. Taken. So looks like right now we have Devontae Adams and Josh Jacobs. So really we could go either running back or wide receiver at this point. In a PPR Cooper Cup is going to get the targets. Or we and, have Todd Gurley. I would be looking at uh, Todd Gurley here. Uh, him and Fournette are the last two, like, workhorses up there. Most it's good, but it'll be a committee. Mm-hmm. Shanahan always runs a committee. Most there might be the best in that committee, but it's going to be a committee nonetheless. Yeah, and then you have you saw Mark Ingram up there, who's definitely going to lose work to J.K. Dobbins this year. Mm-hmm. In which that, too, that's actually fine because of how much they run the ball. But if you got a guy who's a workhorse who gets the bell cow roll, then I'm going to want to go with him uh, instead of a Mark Ingram. But I got no problem with it, Mark Ingram, just not over uh, a Ty Gurley or a Fournette. 
All right, so we are back up. We have DJ Moore, AJ Brown, Amari Cooper. Cooper Cup is still up there. Do we want to double down on receiver, or do we want to reach for like a Mark Andrews at tight end, or maybe even sure up a third running back point? We have Mark Ingram. Um, well, I, David Montgomery still there. I, I, I'm liking what I see here: Keenan Allen, David Montgomery. Who'd you get? Uh, uh, Cooper time's running out, okay. so we picked up Cooper Cup. See, this is the problem with these damn 30 second <laughs> mock drafts is you can't talk it out, but it puts well, you on the hot seat, so you gotta fire quickly. Cause well, the thought process is though, like a tight end could be a good option in this end, but what do you guys think about the potential? I heard that Mark Andrews does have some sort of autoimmune condition where like it may be a concern if, if the coronavirus does withstand it into the fall. Uh, is that any kind of any kind of considerations for you guys when you guys draft of any people that may seem uh, immunocompromised? That could be a huge deal, but uh, I didn't know he had a autoimmune disease. Yeah, it's for for me, it's just not even going to really tight ends in the mid round. They're just not going to be for me this year. I can't picture myself having a Mark Ingram, a George Kittle, Kelsey, or Ertz, just because in the first six rounds, I want receivers and running backs. Yeah, you want to get that depth in there, especially for this year. Like, depth is going to be huge because – we don't know what's going to happen. We don't know their protocols like they, we do for the NBA or the NHL. They're just chugging along at this point for for the season. So who knows if somebody does get coronavirus, if they have to sit, out, sit them out for two weeks or if they're just done for the season. We don't know at this point. So depth, like you were saying, especially this year, is super important. Yeah, even now, as I see it's coming up at 57, I don't feel like I need to uh, add a position we don't have. I feel like you take the best out of the running back or receiver that you could get. Yeah, and at this point, right around 57, we have DeAndre Swift, uh, Cam Akers. We still don't know what's going on in L.A., but I think that he's going to take the starting job. DeAndre Swift, they've already came out and said that it's going to be a committee backfield. But Yeah, that uh, Lions running backs. Lions and running backs don't match. <laughs> I, th- I think what? Since Barry Sanders, they've had 1,000-yard rusher, which is just Reg- wild. Yeah, that's Reggie Bush. He was, the first, he, he was the first one since Barry Sanders, yeah. And then a couple years later, he had minus three yards for the whole season. But he's back with USC, so hopefully he'll get his Heisman back. I I would like David Montgomery here, but it doesn't look like the beginning. I I like to look a little further down a lot because you're never really going to get the – and plus we're what? We're seven picks out, eight actually. And there goes David Montgomery. So a little bit further down running back-wise, we have Darius Geis. I think the value at receiver here is good. If you could get Akers or uh, – Yeah, DK so, Metcalf, AJ Green. Metcalf well, yeah. There's a lot of receivers there. So, actually, the play might be uh, Cam Akers. As you can see, there's a lot of receivers there you'd like as the third receiver with Metcalf, Chark. And then we'd be up in six picks anyway. Some of these receivers are still going to be there. Um, Although if Keenan Allen somehow was still there, I would jump on that. But obviously, being six picks away, yeah. Yeah, and there's three auto drafters beforehand. But there goes Keenan Allen at 51. I do like Keenan Allen at 51. Well, do you guys think that there is some concern with Keenan Allen now that Tyrod Taylor is the quarterback now? Has there really had any decent wide receivers as you know when he when he was the starter back in Buffalo? I, I don't have any concern about Keenan Allen. He's one of the best receivers in the game. Very underrated. Average twelve hundred yards the past three seasons and over a hundred catches. Yeah, he's not going to drop off that much because of quarterback play. He's just too good. Yeah, he, he's super underrated just because towards the start of his career, he had some freak injuries, fell down and lacerated his kidney. Like, come on, how many times does that happen? It's not like a nagging injury. And then he tore his ACL. So that's not like he has a nagging history. It's just, hey, here's some crap that freak stuff that's happened. But otherwise, he's top five for sure. And I'm a Chargers fan, so I'm yeah. a little biased, but still. I mean, I'm not a Chargers fan, and he in my top five always. There you go. All right, so receiver, we have T.Y. Hilton. Oh, we do have Cam so, Akers still available, so let's so, go ahead so and pick because, up Cam. 
Yeah, because we there's not a lot of running backs there, we'll have our choice of receiver. You can see even Terry McLaurin is still down there. Um, you got Diggs who, you know, he's with Josh Allen, but he's another one. It's kind of the same situation as Keenan Allen. Still a ball player. I like the I, I don't mind any of these guys for the next pick as far as McLaurin, Chart, even AJ Green. I mean, but I I mean I just don't wanna even mess with it. He can go super out of the box and go Debo Samuel. The only problem with him is he's going to have to wait yeah. the first six weeks. Yeah, that one I ain't feeling now. I feel like he could actually fall the, to the next time that we pick. Actually, it looks like there's a chance T.Y. Hilton might fall to us. I and like if that. Not, 64, T.Y. Hilton's like – And if not, D.J. Chark is there. Terry there McGowan's is. there. All number one receivers. <clears throat> T.Y. Hilton, here we come. T.Y. Hilton fell to us at 64. That's a hell of a deal for a team's number one receiver, especially for T.Y. He gets open. You got Phillip Rivers throwing to him, so I like that pick. Behind the best offensive line, too, so he's going to have time to get open. Did we get Kyler Murray to get drafted yet? Yeah, he was uh, just drafted, I think, okay. five picks beforehand, 61st, so about – Deshaun Watson will do – Deshaun Watson will have no problem. People feel like he'll uh, decline because of the loss of DeAndre Hopkins. I feel like it'll be better for him because he doesn't have to worry about getting the ball to a number number one wide receiver and just play ball. Yeah, and they have nothing but speed guys, so they're going to just stretch the field. They have Kenny Stills. If you go four wide receivers deep on any team, there's no one better than them. Yeah, Will Fuller, I mean, hell, he had a 65-point game last year, but then followed it up with a dud of one point. So I don't, tend not to like to draft him. But Brandon Cooks further down, I do like his value, especially on yeah. that team. He hasn't missed as many games as people would lead you to believe, uh, Brandon Cooks, that is. This is message brought to you by the Foundation for a Perfect Package. Why do I need Manscaped? Why do I need Manscaped? Why do I need Manscaped? Because the only thrill I want is the one up top. Because being in a relationship is not an excuse to be lazy. Because I like talking ball, not smelling like them. Because deforestation is proven to prevent forest virus. Manscaped is the only brand dedicated to below the waist grooming. Manscaped's Crop Preserver guarantees that you smell your best all day long. Manscaped boxer briefs are the most comfortable underwear on the market. Manscaped's advanced skincare technology makes Nick's a thing of the past. Manscaped is the number one in men's grooming. Subscribers get two free blade refills every three months. Get 20% off plus free shipping handling with the promo code SLUMP at manscaped.com. That's the promo code SLUMP at manscaped.com. Get your lawnmower 3.0 today. We are the Slump Busters. And we approve this message. All right, so we are getting ready to start round seven. A recoup on our team. We have Devontae Adams, Cooper Cup, Josh Jacobs, Todd Gurley, and Cam Akers, and T.Y. Hilton. So I do like our first six picks. Pretty solid team. Then let's see. So we're going to be drafting at 81. So right around there is Evan Ingram. Yeah, I think at this point, I think, you know, in terms of looking at tight ends, I think it's likely going to be Evan Ingram or Tyler Higbee. You have to remember, as well, with Tyler Higbee, he was one of the top tight ends coming into these last couple of weeks at the end of the season last year after uh, Everett got injured. So there's potential for him to take, you know, the number one tight end job now with uh, Los Angeles. I'm actually uh, coming out with, with a post tomorrow or Friday saying that <laughs> I actually believe that Gerald Everett is the better player than Tyler Higby. Tyler Higby to me is that's all recency bias. Tyler Higby was actually drafted a year before Gerald Everett. All right. He's drafted a year before Gerald Everett. Everett came the year after he got the tight end spot. He had it last year. He got hurt. And then Higby just went nuts. You know, and I had him. Wasn't somebody I was uh, talking up, but I luckily was able to pick him up. 
I love Marquise Brown uh, this season. Yeah, another this tight season. end to keep an eye on is Austin Hooper in uh, Stefanski's offense. He does like throwing to tight ends. The only problem is now there's too many cooks in that kitchen for the Cleveland offense. You have Odell, Jarvis, Hooper, right. and Joku. You wanna? And who you got? Chubb and Kareem Hunt as well. So they just have a plethora of weapons and not enough balls to go around. So I I like him in that offense, but I don't like him because of all of the other weapons that they so, have. So 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 coming up here, I suppose I'll be looking at Ingram or uh or Hollywood or who else did you say? Uh, no. Austin Hooper as well. No, I would take. Oh, Ingram was just taken. Uh, I, I think you wow. have to wait to try to. This Super Hooper. Mario dude is listening to our podcast right now somehow. Ooh, even Michael Gallup is there. I think, yeah, I think it has to be Michael Gallup. I, I believe I don't see any other anyone else that's quality. And Michael Gallup coming last week, his statistics were not that much different than uh, Mario Cooper's coming into the season or at the end they of the season. Were. So getting Michael Gallup, you know, at this later round, I think it's actually better value than getting Mario Cooper around the third, to be honest. All righty, so we are going to be at 88. Our next pick right there is Jordan Howard in Miami. Uh, they just came out and said that he's going to be getting all of the goal line and short yardage work. It's not a sexy pick, but when he was a workhorse, he would get you 20 carries for 100 yards and a touchdown. It's not sexy, but it gets the job done for you. Uh, we also have Tyler Boyd around that area. Oh, Julian Edelman just went. I was going to say Julian Edelman now that he has Cam. Yeah. Ooh, there's Darius Slayton, New York. He started to develop rapport with Daniel Jones there. We also have Keyshawn Vaughn. We don't really know the situation for the running backs in Tampa yet. Or we can get Tom Brady. He's not a sexy pick for the beginning of the season, but for the end of the season, the last eight games is either in a dome or in Florida. I'd rather go Matt Stafford. If we had to pick a QB. Oh, Matty Stafford just went. So we can go quarterback. We also have Aaron Rodgers is still on the board as well. Or we can go yeah, back to a receiver. Yeah, at this point, you could just, uh, you know, you keep building the roster. Or Gronk. Y'all want to go Gronk? Oh. Gronk is there at tight end. <laughs> we'll go for it. He might not be very valuable but between the 20s, but from the 20 to the end zone, he's he, going to be golden. He's going to stink as a tight end one. I'd feel better with him as your tight end, too, for sure. Just because he's not going to have a lot if, of yards. If, he's if, have if, if I'm taking Gronk, I might as well take Austin Hooper, the younger guy. Don't like either one of them because both of them are on offenses where there's uh, plenty of skill to go around. And then, you know, Gronk's just, you know, it, the, for the same reasons they – uh, fear Cam being unsuccessful is the same reason we should feel for Gronk could just banged up and being injured. He did take those all that CBD on uh, the year he was retired. So hopefully that CBD is golden and he's running down the field like a Clydesdale like he used to. <laughs> all right. So next we're right around 105. Around that we're looking at Ronald Jones. Uh, Marvin it's Jones. Big, big sleeper right there, Ronald Jones. Uh, looks like he's a starting running back to me as of today in Tampa Bay. Ooh, you also have James White at 109. Uh, with Sony Michelle being banged up, he might miss the first couple weeks. They're not too sure yet, and they can use him as the same role that they had him with uh, Tom Brady instead of trying to hide him and trying to protect Jared Stidham a little bit more. It'll just be a little interesting coming up but it looks like ooh, carry on johnson is still there so do we want to go running back by committee the worst words in fantasy football if, you, if you're gonna go there you i'd rather uh you, you might as well go uh ronald jones i think they're at this point they're in the same spot or you go jk dobbins we're in the ninth round. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to be up in three picks. So three picks down, we're looking at Darnell Henderson, Tom Brady, Latavius Murray. Not a fan of any of those at this point. There's Darius Slayton is still out there. Brandon Cooks is still out there as well. Well, the question Nobody. is now, given how many wide receivers we have, we have Devontae Adams, Cooper Cup, T.Y. Hilton, and Michael Gallup. Do you think we need to focus on quarterback or running back at this point? Definitely a running back. Yeah, quarterbacks you can get late round. I would like, at this point, J.K. Dobbins or uh, 
Who's we'll still out there? We got J.K. Dobbins or Ronald Jones. Dobbins. I'd go Dobbins. I'd even go Mac or Ronald Jones. Dobbins, Jones, then Mac. All right, so we're back up again in six picks. This is where I like drafting between five and ten, or five and nine, really. I, I'm not a big fan of the turn just because you have to wait so long. And you usually have to reach for some players. That that meat of the draft is generally where I like to be. Where do you guys like to draft? I mean, it's, uh, the the draft position is just you know that it, it only determines how you have to strategize. Uh, it, it means sometimes you must if a guy that you may have going in the early thirds, you might have to pick him in the middle of the second because you won't get to have him if you try to wait for that for it to come back around. I think that's what the draft position does. It just, oh, my God, who are we picking? Ronald Jones. Ronald Jones. Just okay. solidifying up the running back slot, I think. I think now that we have a good balance of wide receivers and running backs, I think that should be allowing us to look at we potentially a quarterback in the next round, I think. See, that 30 seconds doesn't let you talk out very much. All righty, so these later rounds, this is generally where you start to get into – some sleepers, some people you think might be better later on, or even some handcuffs. Even for some reason, everybody knows that uh, Dalvin Cook is holding out. We don't know when he's going to sign. But if you were drafting right now and Alexander Mattinson is drafted, he's being drafted in like the 14th round, which is wild because right now he's the starting running back because Dalvin Cook is holding out. He's ranked, what, 129 right now? Pretty, pretty wild at, at this point. I mean, it's because it's nothing to worry about. Dalvin Cook has no leverage. Like, yeah, especially games, Melvin Gordon screwed him over. Yeah. Well, not only that, he's he's going to lose money. Uh, he's going to get fined. It's just he's not in a position to do that like Le'Veon Bell was. All righty. So we are going to be back in six picks. Now we can start looking at the quarterback in round 11. Uh, available, we still have Ryan Tannehill, Big Ben, Jared Goff, Kirk Cousins. Um, then you start going into like QB2s, Jimmy G, just because he's up and down and they can run the ball so much. Joe Burrow, Phil Rivers, oh. Drew Locke. But I like Big Ben coming back from surgery. He's, you know, he's going to throw the ball. He has Juju still there. He has Connor still there. I personally like Big Ben. Getting him in the 11th round, I can't complain too much there. You'll be able to get Big Ben in every 11th around and beyond and in, in every draft. It looked like we might have missed on some. I couldn't see which ones were going, but we missed on a lot, like Stafford, Wentz, but it's cool. It's yeah, Aaron Rodgers made like, a couple it, picks before it, 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 us. If I was in this particular position in my own draft, I'd just – at this point, I'd wait it out even longer and just take uh, Danny Dimes and Cam Newton and call it a day. All righty, so let's go back to the big player list then. Uh, we got Emmanuel Sanders in New Orleans. You have, We still got Gronk. I 100% go Hayden Hurst right here. Take Hayden uh, Hurst. You spoke on Austin Hooper. That's one of those positions, the Falcons tight end, that's going to succeed if you have a little bit of athletic ability. And he used to be a pitcher, so he's pretty athletic. Even though he got the yips. All righty, so we're back up five picks. Did we get Big Ben? No, uh, we picked Hayden Hurst. Yeah, okay, I think was we'll, we'll about wait on wait on a Big Ben QB. So let's see, we still got Emmanuel Sanders, Jameson Crowder, Tevin Coleman in the twelfth round. Coleman's gonna be more of a factor than people think. Again, that's the recency bias. Raheem most it took over in the playoffs. But Shanahan's going to run multiple backs. Tevin Coleman's not going to go any. It could be him one week. It could be most or another or two. <laughs> yeah, and then they, they got rid of Breida, but then they're getting back uh, McKinnon. McKinnon as well. So hopefully he can stay healthy because McKinnon's a hell of a good back. So, uh, so we got C.D. Lamb still there. Uh, looking a little bit further down, you got Robbie Anderson, Justin Jefferson. I think at this point, maybe good just to take even a Jared Goff or a, a, Dan, a Danny Dimes. Let's go right Danny now. Dimes. Yeah, Danny Dimes to give you something in the run game. He'll be inside my top ten. All right. Maybe so right do you guys want 10. to go defense and kicker this draft, or do we want to just forego those uh, last two rounds and get actual players? 
I'm a guy who always look for defense and kicker last because you'll probably be switching them every week anyway. Yeah. All um, righty. So let's just go straight through 15 rounds of all players then. Uh, we won't go defense and kicker. We'll just go bench stash at this point. So at the last couple rounds, I like some of these rookie receivers that are going this late. You have Justin Jefferson, C.D. Lamb. You still have Michael Pittman Jr., Brandon Ayuk in – San Francisco with Debo Samuel out, he's going to have a bigger role at the beginning of the year. Um, you also have Jalen Rieger for Philly, who is projected to lead that team in targets this year as well. Denzel Mims in New York, but the hell's the coach's name up there? Uh, crazy Gase. Eyes. <laughs> Adam Gase. Adam Gase, yeah. there you go. Adam Gase is like fantasy lava you like, don't go near him because he just kills fantasy players for some stupid reason he can't coach fantasy i don't think he can't coach period to be honest i mean his his one big thing is he helps peyton manning that's really it that's his claim to fame right now but justin jefferson in, in round 13 i i really like that when he's sliding right into uh stefan diggs's role i like that at this point we have T.Y. Hilton, so maybe backing him up with Michael Pittman if he goes down. Phil Rivers loves the big-bodied receivers, especially in the red zone. Look at Mike Williams a couple years ago. He had 11 touchdowns, but he only had like 400 receiving yards. He loves those big-bodied receivers, especially down there in the, the red zone. Oh, yeah, you still got Henry Ruggs. I don't like Deshaun Jackson. Jalen Rieger is a younger, faster Deshaun Jackson at this point. I just like all these rookie receivers that are down. Here I, I, I have Jalen Rager as my number finishing as my top rookie receiver, definitely in uh, 2020. All right, Jalen Rager, if yeah. we can find you in eight seconds, we will draft you. I think he – was he taken beforehand? We're taking Justin Jefferson for now, but I think he was taken beforehand. Team looks good. I'm going to let you guys uh, finish up the rest of the draft. All right. Before you head out, where can we find you? Give that shameless plug of all of your socials. <laughs> For sure, man. Uh, I'm I'm the most active on my Instagram account, which is uh, at Fantasy Football Lord, and on Twitter, you catch me at Lord Don't Lose. Yes, indeed. Link in my bio has my most recent podcast, so you know if you're listening, check that out. And it's been real. I appreciate you guys having me. Well, thanks for coming on the show. Thanks for dropping some knowledge on us, getting some of these listeners some extra knowledge, some extra maybe draft strategy that they weren't thinking of. Go give him a follow for us, guys. So thank you, sir. Oh, guys, this is Juju Talk Sports. You like sports betting, right? Of course you do. You're listening to a fantasy football podcast after all. Well, let me tell you about Razorsport.com. Razor is a worldwide sports betting network all designed around helping you. Their diverse crew of handicappers produce plays that Vegas Sharps don't want you to know about. Go to their website right now and sign up for a free trial at Razorsport.com. That's Razor, R-A-Z-E-R, sport.com. Proud partners of the Slump Buster Podcast. Check them out and enjoy the rest of the show. I think at this point, look at maybe the best handcuffs you can look at right now. So, Jamal you know, Williams is good. I took Jamal Williams as a handcuff for Aaron Jones, but what are the handcuffs you guys think would could be valuable? Obviously, this Rashad Penny, if he ever gets healthy, could be a good uh, AJ Dillon would be a good one, too. Everybody's picking Justin Jackson for the Chargers, but it's looking more like Kelly is going to be the guy because Justin Jackson is going to be on a very short leash. At this point, do we have to pick 15? Do we have to pick Cam just to please Julian so he doesn't fire I, I think, us? I think we have to. Just so he doesn't fire us, right? Well, we, we don't want to upset the main man, right? Yeah, we can't. So, so Julian, this, someone, is, this is for you. Is I'm Cam there? Have, so. Cam, Cam is, is there. there. So guess so, what? Julian, just for you, buddy. If Cam is still there at 177, we're going to draft what? him. But in all honesty, though, do, do you expect Cam Newton to get the starting job from day one, or you think he'll have to earn stuff from Stidham? No, I think um, if he can get the offense in the – he might not be week one just because of the offense. It's 50-50 at this point because nobody knows what happens in Bill Belichick's mind. Nobody. Mm -hmm. So at this point, it's still 50-50. I've heard a couple reports – I forget, it was maybe Mina Kimes or Diana Rossini was talking to a AFC East coach – 
and they uh, said that they don't see Cam being the starter because they love Stidham so much, but they'll come in as like a wildcat, kind of like, um, what the hell's his name in New Orleans? Uh, Taysom Hill. Uh, Taysom Hill, yeah. But, I mean, if they can gear the offense towards Cam, which they've shown that they can change up styles based off who they're playing, and they've also done it beforehand with Brissett a little bit when uh, both Garoppolo and Brady went down two years ago. So I, mm-hmm. I have confidence in Bill Belichick if he, if he really does want to make Cam starter. But and, and it definitely does upgrade all of the the weapons they have. Nikhil Harry, Julian Edelman, especially James White. It's going to blow their stock up once people start getting in and actually doing the drafts closer to the season. Their stocks are going to be rising for sure. Oh, yeah, look at there. Nikhil Harry went at 109, so a couple picks, or 169, a couple picks before what we were going to be drafting, so he's still available. There's still a lot of players available, Robbie Anderson, Michael Pittman Jr., Preston Williams in Miami, Chase Edmonds is going to be another popular handcuff this late. Let's see. Oh, Steven Sims as well could be an interesting pick because uh, given he could co- given how well he did uh, at the end of the season, he could complement McLaren in Washington, I'd say, as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but even, look, Devin Funches at, at 210 opposite of uh, Devontae Adams, that's a good pick there. Uh, Deshaun Jackson, I'm, I'm staying away from him. James Washington would be an interesting late-round filler as well in that three-man rotation now that they're getting Big Ben back. But, yeah, you see there Brandon Ayuk in San Francisco. He's going to be the the number one receiver until Debo Samuel comes back. back. Larry Fitzgerald, I'm sorry, buddy, but you're you're no longer relevant fantasy-wise unless – well, who's who, what's the depth chart right now in Arizona? It's it's a mixture of uh, obviously Hopkins. Hopkins is one. I think Kirk is – we could say Kirk is the number two now. Just because Larry is still is old now, he's older. He he didn't run as crisp of routes as he used to. He still caught the ball because I mean, hell, he has more tackles than catches or drops at this point yeah. in his career. Um, so I, I would say Kirk is the number two, but I don't think any of those guys have standalone value unless Hopkins goes down. Yeah. No, so we've got no, about I, I, 15 minutes to fill. Let's just kind of go through and just give a case for some of these people that we see on here to close out the, the podcast to, to yeah. see what, because we're generally doing what 17, 18 round drafts. We only did a, a 15 rounder today. So I'm just going to pick out a couple names that we feel deserve a, a slot on your team. I think Al Lazard, uh, you know, has a good shot as well being the number two receiver. Cause I mean, he had a good connection with Aaron Rodgers, you know, when Devonta Adams was out for a couple of weeks. And I think the fact that he did trust him this much, I think, you know, he had a good chance, has a good chance to have a breakout season as well this year. Yeah, him, him and Funches are definitely going to battle for that number two. Some other interesting people, Mohamed Sanu in New England, uh, depending on Nikhil Harry's uh, health. Rex Burkhead at the start of the season with Sonny Michelle being banged up and possibly going to be missing the first couple. Let's see who else is out there. Chris Thompson, but Jacksonville's a tire fire at this point. A- Antonio Brown. There's always considerations of him if he ever does come back into the league. We went so long without mentioning Antonio Brown and you broke it. <laughs> I'm so sorry. But no, but that still has to be some consideration. I know the Bucks have said today that they're not interested in Antonio Brown. But I mean, again, like the potential is like if there is a lack of depth in some of these wide receiver cores, would any teams call up Antonio Brown? Would it would it make sense to pick a, a late round flyer for him? I think Josh Gordon, if he gets reinstated, he will get a job before Antonio Brown at, at this point. I feel like Antonio Brown is just such a hot button issue that teams will go after Josh Gordon before they go after Antonio Brown. I, I, I can agree with you on that. Oh, my old man win. I, I wouldn't say. Heck yeah, go old man win. It looked like he was <laughs> running one mile an hour last year. My three year old niece can run faster than him. Tyler Eifert is going to be an interesting person to keep your eye on in Jacksonville. It's just Jacksonville is just like they're going to be tanking to get to that first pick, but he's going to be an interesting person if he can keep healthy. Even Ted Ginn in Chicago would be somebody to possibly keep an eye on, but he's been in the league now for like 18 years. I'm surprised he's still in the league. When was he drafted? Like, what, 2006, seven? Something like that. I think he's at like year 16 or 17 at this point. Let's see. Yeah, see, there's Jarek McKinnon. 
kind of touched on him as well. Well, let's let's give a rundown as well on on, on the team. Besides yeah, the right fact in. that we didn't draft a kicker and a defense, I think you know we can pick those up later on. But essentially, we get able to get uh, Daniel Jones at quarterback, uh, Devontae Adams, Cooper Cup as our two starting wide receivers, along with T. Y. Hilton, Michael Gallup, uh, Justin Jefferson as our wide receiver core. Running back core is Josh Jacobs, Todd Gurley, Cam Akers, Jay Dobbins, Ronald Jones, and. Jamal Williams is our last one. And then tight end Gronk with uh, Hayden Hurst. And of course, we can't leave out Cam Newton as well as our QB2 in the spot. All right, let's go to my mock results for the team that I auto drafted because it kicked me. How'd it go? Uh, Derek Henry, Travis Kelsey, Juju Smith Schuster, DJ Moore, Tyler Lockett, Darius Geis, Matt Ryan. San Francisco, Zane Gonzalez, Darius Slayton, Big Ben, Anthony Miller, Jack Doyle, Adrian Peterson, and Seattle. So they went two defenses, two quarterbacks, and a kicker. And I got a C minus on that. I, I never understand like why these auto drafts pick defenses so early. Like most players don't pick defense so early. I guess it is the goal to fill out the roster at the end of the day. But you would think like Yahoo or any kind of aggregate would actually be able to realize that most people do not draft defenses this early. Yeah. It's just not like their algorithm to where they're drafting their defense in the last two rounds, their kicker in the last two rounds. Yeah. But you are going to have those guys that draft kickers in like round 10 for some reason because they want to get that top kicker. But even as pro kicker as I am, I know fantasy wise, there's not much difference between like kicker four and kicker 14. Yeah, at, at the pretty end much, of the day. Yeah, pretty much you pretty much have like Justin Tucker, Will Lutz, and Harrison Butker, and then that's basically it. And then everything else is kind of like a, a free for all, I'd say. If you don't get one of those top three, you're just better on just waiting on and just kind of rotating depending on what matchups you have. Yeah, see, this one, the first kicker went uh, round eight, pick two was Justin Tucker, and then round nine is when all the other auto draft kickers went. Uh, Greg Zerline, Harrison Buckner, Will Lutz, Robbie Gold, and Zane Gonzalez. I do like Greg Zerline in Dallas, though. He's kicking indoors pretty much the whole time. And he definitely starts the leg. But, I mean, the concern is still, like, his accuracy did not in- decline a little bit this past year at the Rams. It's one of the reasons why, you know, they let him go, along with, you know, the hefty contract, I'd say. But I-, I was still surprised, to be honest, that the Cowboys actually did pick up Greg Zerline. Uh, Albeit, I do know that, you know, Dallas does have the Rams special teams coach now. That's probably but, why they picked him up, so. But the fact that they picked up, you know, Kai Forbath, who did really well for for the Cowboys this past year, and then ended up picking Greg Zerling, I don't see how that makes sense other than the coach, I'd say. Yeah, there you go. Jalen Rieger went at the beginning of that round that we wanted to get him, but still, I like Justin Jefferson in the 13th round. He's essentially sliding right into that role of Stefan Diggs. Yeah, no, I, I agree with that. Is there any other plays you want to make make out? I think C.D. Lamb was an interesting pick that was made in 12th round. Personally, I probably would have went him maybe a bit earlier, to be honest. Even though, you know, you have to deal with Amari Cooper, you have to deal with uh, Michael Gallup. You still have a lot of uh, mouths to feed. I think C.D. Lamb will offer some explosive talent that, you know, the other two wide receivers can't really offer, to be honest. Yeah, I, I think he'll definitely finish. I don't know if he'll beat out. Amari Cooper for wide receiver one on that team, but he's going to be damn close. Yeah. He's going to finish his two, and he's going to be damn close to, to getting Amari Cooper. But I like the top end of these rookie receivers. I like that most of the positions that they went to. Um, like I said, with Michael Pittman, he's went to Indianapolis with Philip Rivers. Rivers historically loves the big body receivers. Mike Williams, uh, Malcolm Floyd, sorry, and um, – Vincent Jackson so he loves those big bodied receivers so I feel like in that position he's going to be good just Jefferson sliding right into that number two role Jalen Rieger there's nobody was playing for Philadelphia receiver wise last year they had to go out to the streets Vince Papali-esque and grab some random people out of the stands to play receiver for him last year and I think another one as well that we have to consider that we don't talk about too much is Jerry Judy as well from Denver. Given that, you know, he's likely still going to be the number two option, or he's going to be the number two option uh, behind Cortland Sun. I think he could, you know, hopefully have a good connection with uh, Drew Locke as well coming into Denver. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of people are high on Noah Fant. I'm not a big fan of him this year just because 
Denver did draft the Missouri tight end that played with Drew Locke for two years. So Mm -hmm. right away, he already has a one-year additional year of uh, chemistry chemistry, with Drew Locke than Noah Fant does. I'm not sure how athletic he is. I just know if you're drafting somebody's college teammate, generally they're already going to have a a big rapport because they're in college you're living closer quarters. You're spending a lot more time dicking around in school and stuff with each other. So your chemistry is a little bit closer coming out of college, especially because in the NFL, your people are switching around so much. Would you rather have someone like Noah Fan or would you rather have Dallas Gallery, for example, from Philadelphia? You know, he's a tight end too, but, you know, obviously it's more, a lot more targets coming in. I, I, would, I would go Dallas Goddard at that point. He, he finishes, like, I think uh, number one or right there at the turn of TE1 and TE2. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, he's going to beat out a lot of these other guys. One interesting one right there in the 14th round is Greg Olson. I know he's old, but he is going to to Seattle. You know, their tight end room is pretty full as well at this point. O.J. Howard, I think, could have went undrafted. I have a feeling that they are going to be trading him just because Cameron Bray is still there. You have Gronk there as well. Well, that's the thing. You know, if he is a potential trade target, you think, you know, well, obviously it depends on the team he's looking at, but you think it is potential to get him in the late round, just kind of hold on to him and see if they actually do deal him out. Yeah, you could, because usually the first two weeks, you're not doing much switching of your uh, of your fantasy team. At least hopefully you're not doing a lot of switching. If you're doing a lot of switching between week one, two, and three, something went wrong. You have some problems as well. No, I, I, no, I, I agree with that. But there you go, yeah. Ebron in, in 13, you're getting Big Ben as your quarterback. I, I like that pick. Uh, Adrian Before. Peterson in 14 is is pretty pretty interesting because of Darius Geis' injury history. He's only played five games in three years. Yeah. No, I, I agree with that. But do you expect Adrian Peterson to, you know, kind of deal with the rigors of how, how many years he's been? is he in now? Because, I mean – I mean, I guess he's similar to the rank as Frank Gore, given how long they've both been kind of in the league now. Yeah. If Geis goes down, he'll be the immediate number one starter. But I do feel like Gibson will start to eat away at that. They're not going to be using him as much. Um, Right there, two picks before him, Devontae Freeman um, is an interesting pick just because he's a free agent right now. We don't know where Mm -hmm. he's going to land. But I definitely would have picked him over Duke Johnson. I don't know why that dude picked Duke Johnson. Well, is it, well, Duke Johnson's still on the Texans, right? Like he still could get some, you know, PPR he, catches, he, right? He'll get some catches, but I, I don't think he's going to have standalone value unless David Johnson gets hurt. Well, but he's hit, but David Johnson's injury history still leaves some question yeah, marks about his health as well. Dislocating his damn wrist the one year I have him on my team. <laughs> still salty about that. But I, I don't know. Like that. That well. In general, I, I didn't un- quite understand the trade in the first place. But, but you know, peanuts. I, From what I've read into, they just they didn't want to pay him. For whatever reason, they just didn't want to pay him. They felt like he should have played out his contract and then they could renegotiate, but they didn't want to renegotiate before it was up. So, I mean, there's those other reports of him bringing his family around practice, mm-hmm. bringing his girlfriend around practice, which, you know, I watched the – backstage for the chargers i watched the uh, amazon all or nothing yeah and then the hard knocks like i watch all those and people are always bringing their family around practices and stuff so like yeah. that was just a weird reasoning for getting him out of there or whatever so yeah i just didn't see the the amount you know the, obviously it's not hopkins quality but they brought in some decent receivers they brought in randall cobb they brought in uh brandon cooks to kind of fill the void a little bit offer draw for Watson some kind of weapons, but I, I don't think that will suffice, to be honest. Yeah, they're, they're like I said earlier, they're, they're pretty much all speed. They're, you have Kenny Stills, deep threat guy, Will Fuller, deep threat guy, Brandon Cooks, historically deep threat guy. And then you have Randall Cobb, who's going to kind of be your possession receiver at this point mm-hmm. to try to get you those third and fives or whatever. So we'll see. They're, they're going to be an interesting fantasy team because – you have a historical workhorse back if he gets stay healthy. You have yep. a top 10, arguably top five quarterback. And then you just have these guys who have been hit or miss for their whole career receiver wise. So yep. they're going to be a very interesting team. Yeah, I know. I, I, I can see that. All righty. That will be the podcast for us. 
who will bring Jake back in during the season, hopefully a couple more times. If not, he'll definitely be doing some rankings with us again. Hopefully, you know, coronavirus doesn't kill the season for us. All fingers are crossed. But, Jay, thank you, buddy. You'll have to send me this roster so we can post it for us. And then you'll have to let me know what Yahoo ranked your draft. You're probably going to get, like, an F because you didn't have a full team. We didn't draft a kicker with the defense, yeah. So you'll probably get an F. But we'll put it up so you guys can roast us later, especially me for being so pro kicker and not drafting a kicker. (laughs) Oh, Julian's going to give us so much flack on that. Yeah, Julian better not say anything because, bam, Cam Newton is on the team. So, Julian, I know you're going to edit this. Cam Newton is on the team, so, bam. You, you your want advice. a kicker or Cam Newton, <laughs> essentially. So Exactly. So, all righty, guys, we will see you in two weeks. We will continue with our drafting of teams at each draft position, and then we'll have, like, a vote afterwards of which team you guys felt was the best. So look out for that on the Instagram page, Slump Buster Pod. Um, look for us on our website, the Slump Buster dot com uh twitter instagram facebook all those big things are all your major streaming platforms as well to listen to the podcast so we will see you guys in two weeks bye